Lessons in Marketing Excellence is making a pit stop in Mumbai this week. Right opposite this building that used to be the corporate office of HUL is an institute that has given India some of its best corporate leaders. From Chanda Kochar of ICICI Bank to Nitin Paranjpe of HUL. This week we visit their alma mater, Jamnal Al Bajaj Institute of Management Studies. It's no wonder that this institute is also called the CEO Factory. The JBIMS alumni is actively involved in the institute even today. From devoting time to special lectures to upgrading infrastructure like classrooms. It was ranked 9th in the DNA B school report this year and consistently features in the top 10. Last year's average placement was close to 13 lakh rupees per annum. A lot of corporate India bigwigs have a soft spot for JBIMS. Well, last year JBIMS finished in the ninth position on line season 1. So clearly there's a lot of work cut out for them this year. But first up on the campus round, the students face a unique case study from a healthcare company but surprisingly from a perfumes and cosmetics sector. Indians traditionally have consumed far less personal care products than their counterparts in Asia. But that's set to get a huge boost over the next few years. The fragrances sector itself, now close to 500 crore rupees, is expected to grow at 20%. Sniffing this opportunity, Piramal Healthcare is planning to launch its first lifestyle retail product, a range of premium perfumes. This range will include super premium perfumes, perfumes meant for the SECA category, as well as children's perfumes, a market that is yet to be recognized in India. There is no strong Indian brand in the perfume market and Piramal Healthcare believes that it has the required competencies to break into this segment. We have the capability to develop the best perfumes in the world and then we also have an OTC marketing which we sell other over-the-counter brands. So we have the distribution network, we have the marketing skills to uh, design an ad and so on. So I think in-house we have uh, huge capability. We have a sister company which is called Pyramid Glass which actually makes these very unique molds. So we have uh, something which is unique, which has intellectual property, which has design, which is world class in its presentation and we have to figure out how best to market it. So the challenge for JBIMS is to come up with a business plan for the perfume division of Piramal Healthcare, which includes everything from segmentation, positioning, marketing strategy and product portfolio, with insights into the children's perfume category. So Piramal Healthcare wants to develop their perfume division. I wonder which of these two teams will be able to successfully sniff out solutions for them. Let's take a look at the two teams from JBIMS. With a tiny campus in South Mumbai, surrounded by corporate offices and many other colleges, the JBIMS students often step out for their daily cup of tea and brainstorming. And this team had to do a lot of it while preparing for this presentation. We didn't know what to do. How can a healthcare brand get into perfumes? They have a glass manufacturing facility, but what about the sourcing? The team name may seem like a tongue twister, but Team Claws with Sleek had a reason for it. Closwitz was a Prussian general who devised war strategies very tactfully. So we thought, why not? We believe in that. A scent was cornily named so because of the perfume case study. George was more of the innovator, the one with the bright ideas. And uh, Nichelle and I mainly did the market research and the industry study. And of course, played devil's advocate to George's wild ideas. The marketing batch in JBIMS is only 45 students strong. And these three, who have been close friends, have been planning to team up for Lime for a while now. Last year itself, Lime had created quite a buzz uh, in our institute. Uh, so, and since all three of us are marketing students, we had decided, uh, even before the case was uploaded, that we would participate as a team. Right, so we're going to have a lot of serious gyan, management fundas and presentations coming up. But before that, we thought we'll sit with both the teams, have a little bit of fun. Uh, I'm going to give them some acronyms which they have to flesh out. You guys ready? Yes. yes. All right, so the first one is radar. Radio, uh, radio detection and ranging. Fantastic, congratulations, that is the correct one. AM and PM. Achha, bol, bol, bol. Anti -marine and and post -marine. Fantastic, that is the correct answer. It's one all, whoever gets the last abbreviation clearly wins this and goes and presents first in front of the jury. Are you guys ready? And your last word is, <coughs> a little tough one, laser. 
Yeah. All right. Light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Whoa! Brilliant! <laughs> it's time for a quick break. Stay with us because after the break, the first team, that is Team Apex, presents in front of the jury for the Piramal Healthcare Case Study. Being the first presentation does make an impact on the judges and uh, probably a standard is set against which the second presentation will be compared. Lessons in Marketing Excellence is back in Mumbai at the JBIMS campus. Now, before the competition heats up this evening, let's meet the judges. Hi, I'm Kirar uh, from Piramal Healthcare. Uh, we are here today to actually uh, look at this case in much more detail and looking at solutions from the JBIMS group uh, who can help us actually launch a new product in the personal care category. Hi, I'm Anuj Rustagi from HUL. I'm today looking at how these students are able to translate what they have learned in the classroom into a real life case study. Hi, I'm Anuradha and today at JBIMS I'm going to try and look to see what kind of insights the students here have about consumers in India, especially when it comes to the personal care category. Alright, we have Team Ascent with us here on stage and they will be advising Piramal Healthcare on the Perfumes Division. All the best team. Our brief was to design a marketing and selling plan for the launch of perfumes catering to the super premium segment, SECA and the children's segment. A market analysis revealed that 68% of the purchases were for women's fragrances and that the trend in developing countries was to move from deodorants to eau de cologne to eau de toilet and out of perfume. Also, most fragrances were created in perfume boutiques and sold to fashion houses. A market research was mainly through questionnaires for the super premium and SECA segment and focus group discussions for the kids range. A super premium perfume, Blue Lotus, caters to sophisticated people with high spending power it will be pitched as an international brand crafted with in Indian values. A top perfumer would be commissioned to design an Indian fragrance. The creation process would be publicized and form part of the initial brand story. The fr fragrance would contain premium blue lotus extract. Extensive tachystoscopy would help select a bottle design and the design bank that pyramidal glass possesses could be used for the same. Moving on to the international launch, we're looking at designer launches, fashion magazine inserts, and running ads featuring the creation story and the perfume designer. Product extensions include a wedding range of perfumes that can even be made to order, while personal care, co-branded spas and vodka are other options. The underlying product strategy would entail being open to breaking even over a longer period and long-term strategy to create a strong brand identity. Now, Tiara by Blue Lotus is the SECA fragrance that will be launched a year after the Super Premium one. It symbolizes young, fashionable women who are trying things that are edgy and ahead of the fashion curve. Design would be by an upcoming fashion designer chosen every year who would design three perfumes as well as glass collectibles that would accompany the perfume. Tiara aims to plug the gap in the market for a sub rupees thousand perfume. Princes for tweens would have to start by creating category awareness. The target audience are tweens, that is, girls between 8 to 12 years of SEC A and B parents. Princess looks to latch on to the kids' need to imitate their mothers, be fashionable, and yet retain their non-adult identity. It would be hypoallergenic and retained, retailed at major kids' retail chains. Now, moving on to distribution, Blue Lotus looks at outsourcing international distribution while also focusing on internet retailing. Apart from in-flight retailing and duty-free stores, it would be available at six exclusive outlets in India. We foresee Blue Lotus becoming a pan-Asian brand like Isemi Ake. Tiara and Princess would be relying on existing Pyramus OTC network for on-ground infrastructure, but would have a separate sales force to ensure that the two brands get the due focus 
and put TRS presence in tier 2 cities. And finally, I'd like to borrow from an old line and end by saying, promise a woman just about anything, but make sure you give her a blue lotus. Thank you. For your top premium segment, the competition is international. Nothing in the case actually talks about how are you going to compete with them and why would a person uh, who is buying that buy an Indian brand? Now most international perfumes are designed by perfume designers of boutique houses and these are then gone on and sold down to the fashion houses. So the, our main uh, the problem over here was actually to build some sort of coherence with the sophisticated segment. They need to understand that this is super premium. So which is why we are going and uh, we, are, uh, we are commissioning a perfumer, a famous perfumer and asking him to come over to India and then design a fragrance which has Indian values. And that's where Blue Lotus fits in because Blue Lotus has connotations not just with Indian uh, culture wherein uh, uh, both the color of Krishna's skin was related to Blue Lotus but also it has Pan-Asian connotations uh, um, uh, even in Egyptian culture as well as Chinese. So why do you think the consumer uh, would value that Indian values quote unquote? Fine, the Indian values you're looking at uh, uh, that showing here are tranquility, the complete balance, that uh, so this is basically people on a higher plane who achieve some sort of success so that is the kind of thing we are appealing to so uh, basically a person say a sophisticated person who would want to attend yoga classes so the kind of perfection he is trying to achieve there that is what this perfume symbolizes third segment you want to target which is the tweens what is the need why will the tweens want perfume today if nothing in the market exists and once you tell me what the need is, whom are you going to target? Are you going to talk to the tweens because they may not have money? Or are you going to talk to their parents? Yeah, we're looking at talking to the tweens. The message to the tweens would be that we, uh, this, is the, this is the perfume that we have. Go out and get it. And we are, uh, we are counting on their pester power. Just like the way that they go and buy their t-shirts and uh, other uh, clothes. At the same time, they would see that perfume and ask their parents, this is the perfume I want, please get it for me. So, so that's to add to that, the final customer for us is going to be the parents, hmm. but the influencers and the consumers are going to be the kids. Why do you recommend that they have a super premium brand? Why don't they just <coughs> launch Tiara? Tiara would definitely take off because looking at the price segments, uh, in the sub-1000 market, there is a definite need. So if you price a perfume at the range of 1000 and uh, do a lot of promotions during your gifting seasons, during your festive seasons, there is going to be immediate offtake. So at the end of the day, as part of our portfolio, we're looking at uh, uh, Tiara to drive in the immediate sales and uh, Blue Lotus to drive long-term sales and build the, the brand. I have one final question. In your research, what did it throw up about Indians and their use of perfume? With respect to the findings of our market research, what we found was that for the super premium brand, people were less experimental with brands, but they were more experimental with scent. The scent was the thing of prime importance for the customers. Again, they bought perfumes a lot while traveling and on visits abroad, which is why we thought about the international launch, the launch in the fashion week. And also they used separate perfumes for occasions. For the SEC A class, what we saw that they were more experimental with brands. So as long as they see a connection with the brand that you are offering, they will look at consuming that brand. For the kids, what we saw that they were not really brand conscious, but they had an aspirational thing for their mom's perfumes and their mom's cosmetics. So, Seeing that, we think that the girls segment is really a good segment to look at for the kids. Thank you team of 10, thank you judges. Don't forget to log on to limeonline.in. That is the portal where you can catch all the action from every campus of Lessons in Marketing Excellence Season 2. The judges seemed quite interested in our presentation and they did have a lot of questioning to check our clarity of thought. Uh, but I think we have convinced them pretty well. So. I would say that it has gone quite well. It's time for a quick break, but don't go anywhere because after the break, we'll find out how Team Kloss with Cleek tackles the Piramal Healthcare Perfume Case Study. Our core proposition and the feasibility in terms of implementing the project makes us very strong in this competition.
Welcome back. You're watching the campus round of season two of Lessons in Marketing Excellence. We are at JBIMS Mumbai this week. We've just seen Team Ascent present here, and now it's the turn of the second team. Team Klaus with Cleek is going to take it away from here. All the best, team. Taking inspiration from Brata Samhita, a text on ancient Indian perfumery, we present to you Brand Raga. Currently, there's no other perfume positioned in the Indian market around the ancient Indian perfumery. Our differentiator is a perfume that can leverage Indianness along with class and style. The motivator for the customer being the brand reflects his persona and elegance. On the basis of the segmentation, the target audience in the adult segment is highly spending, culturally inclined urban Indians above the age of 30 years. Similarly, for the kids segment, urban kids between 10 to 15 years hailing from rich culturally oriented families and having a high sense of individuality. The positioning for a perfume is a perfume that is elegant, ethnic and rich in fragrance for those who personify the Indian culture. With the brand name Raga, a tagline is Express Your Soul. The product portfolio will consist of Raga Classic, a unisex fragrance, Raga Shiva and Raga Shyamaka for men, Raga Malika and Raga Kasturi for women, while Raga Vivaha would be an exclusive wedding collection. Altitude would be for boys and princess would be for girls. The basic SKUs would be for 60 ml and 100 ml packages which would be available at a price range of 2400 and 4000 respectively. Raga Vivaha while would be available in a single SKU of 60 ml for a price of 3000. The promotion would be in three stages of pre-launch, launch and post-launch. The pre-launch stage will have a book release wherein successful Indian personalities will have write-ups on how Indian culture has helped them in their lives. Books and the CDs will be available in high-end bookstores, uh, five-star hotels and uh, Jewelry stores like Vibhavandas, Vinji, Zaveri. 20 days post the pre-launch event, Mr. Rajay Paramal himself will announce the arrival of Brand Raga in the Indian market. Right after the announcement, immediately all the variants will be available at the selected outlets. Post that, gradually promotions will begin at uh, premium out-of-home locations, print at high-end media, using uh, television commercials on lifestyle channels and sponsoring wedding exhibitions. Lastly, after six months, we would be introducing the kids variant, where activities would include promotion through television shows like Saragamapa, Little Champs, introducing Facebook, uh, Facebook applications, out of home and online. The manufacturing facility will be located at Kosamba, and sourcing will be done from the best of the manufacturers. We will have three distributors across India in North, West and South Central zones, catering to the demand of nine major cities. Distribution will be mainly done via modern trade channels through high-end malls, high-end jewelry stores, airport duty-free shops, etc. So with no existing players in the market, and with our first mover's advantage, we propose to break the clutter with Brand Raga, which will epitomize the Indianness that is so deeply rooted within us. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me about what is the segment you are targeting, and also the segment you are not targeting. And second question related to that is, how are you going to find the segment? The segment basically is not a person who is actually trying to, you know, emulate the Western personalities of by using Hugo, a CK or a Ralph Lauren, but somebody who is imbibed with, imbibed with Indian culture. There are a lot of Indians who have grown over a period of time in India and have that capacity of spending very high uh, on uh, luxury products, but currently they are not using those Western products. In that, there would be the normal SECA plus the premium segment. The premium segment would be uh, launched very later after the brand has been established. And coming to how we will uh, find it, that is, again, basically identifying the western, the northern, and the south central areas. This is where those culturally, traditionally rich families, in the, like in the Gharanas of the Rajasthan, and Gujaratis in the west, and uh, the Punjabi. Punjabis in the north as well. And uh, in the Hyderabads, we have the Nawabi. people from... Nawabi families. Is why not East? Because they don't have any. <laughs> East have a very good culture uh, of uh, you know a lot of different kinds. But the spending power at East and the culturally rich orientation about uh, you know we listening about this particular gharana or a, a different kind of segment altogether. Actually, we'll definitely would want to cater East, but at a later stage once the brand establishes itself. The, the main idea is that uh, we wish to cater in the main metros. So when we are approaching West Zone, we are looking at seven to eight outlets minimum. So that there is where the our target audience lies and probably we'll be able to attract. Uh, if your consumer segment is this, what you've selected, what is going to be a source of growth? I mean, in terms of what they're using today, which they will stop? Currently, they would possibly be using others of good quality, maybe ex imported from Arabian areas or some Indian manufacturers as well, but they are not very comfortable using the, uh, those CKs and the Ralph Lawrence. If you're saying they're using Atas right now, what would the price point that they are would be using right now, Atas? Price points of Atas are very low compared to what we are pricing. So why would eight. they pay a premium of whatever that you're talking about, 2,400 rupees, for vis-a-vis -vis if they're already using an Atas? One, because they have the uh, ability to pay. Second, the brand experience that we would be giving. It's about 
feeling the in in, in a traditional latar is just about applying it and just going for a occasion but here it's about the feeling that would be uh, the experience that would be selling along with the brand it's about raga the connection with the music music offers how do you how do you envisage that we will create that experience called raga Uh, the experience, uh, as was mentioned in the campaign, where we're launching a music CD, which will all be musically in the book of having the success stories of the individual. It will be part of the product portfolio, so it's not a separate thing. It's part of the augmented product. Now, when a product, when a customer buys a uh, fragrance, he's not looking just to buy that uh, uh, perfume, but he's actually looking for a brand experience. So that one spray actually is music to your senses. That kind of relation. Chef, we are looking forward to establishing between Raga and the uh, kind of experience which they can face. Have you sized this segment? What would be the potential opportunity of this? Because Piramal is interested in making a good business out of it. And <clears throat> considering the first year growth will not be very high, we see a sales of around 30 crores in the first year. Assuming that the advertising spend would be 15 to 20 percent of uh, the overall sales. How did you come to this 30 crore figure? The current perfume industry is of 500 crores. and it's growing especially the premium uh, industry is growing by 300 to 500 sorry is growing about 22 to 25% the trade margin in fact is offered by around 25 to 30% so from that basis we expect that we'll have at least some kind of market share in that now considering is the introduction state of the product life cycle uh, and considering the, the fact that we will require a huge amount of promotion we are assuming that 30% of or 15 to 20 to 30% of the ad spends will actually accumulate in accordingly uh, revenue is it cool is it a statement is it aspirational to wear perfume it is kind of recognition of self that is what we are looking at not what you are looking at what are people doing currently currently people are wearing perfumes because they want to um, showcase that this is what they are i mean if i'm wearing a fruit if i'm a girl and i'm wearing a fruit flavored perfume then that is the kind of fragrance i prefer if it's a very strong perfume so i'm kind of uh, out brand consciousness that. is not very high it's not important for me to say i'm wearing dior or i'm wearing for the segment we are uh, targeting not not really but there is a very huge segment of uh, premium users who want to flaunt the brand that uh, you just spoke about all right thank you thank you thank you team class with click i'm sure you haven't made the judges job any simpler we'll give the judges a couple of minutes to decide which team from jbims will represent them at the semi final round i think the presentation went really well we said all the points we had in our mind and uh, the judges asked valid questions which we could answer successfully the small packed classroom waited anxiously for the judges to decide which of the two teams would go on to represent jb at the semi all right so the result of the piramal healthcare case study is that the winning team is team ascent all right let's go over to kedar who's going to help us understand what worked in team ascent's favor and what didn't for team class with uh, rather than just looking at indianness because that would be the most op felt strategy i mean which will come naturally to anyone saying that let's use a uh, indian name uh, they try to create a brand in the entire thing uh, so it was a very unique concept the way you did also the way you actually looked at the consumer segmentation and the three segments and actually trying to understand the insights in the segment of each one of them uh, was quite nicely done fantastic so it's a wrap here from the mumbai campus of jbims don't forget to log on to limeonline.in that is the website where you can catch all the action not just from jbims but from every campus that we go to we'll see you next week from another b school campus with another real life marketing case study thanks for watching a lot may say it feels great a lot of hard work went to it went into it a lot of uh, the midnight oil was burned and uh, i guess there's no looking back now team ascent is going to rise it's going to soar